throughout the entire course of the war, the Western Front line only moved about 400 meters at the most, and it kept going back and forth side by side. And so in the entire warfare of that area was just trying to take new land, try and take over new land. Both sides were doing it, and it was just like this battle of basically – uh, resistance against against resistance against resistance, and they were just stuck there for years. In both films, 1917 and All Quiet on the Western Front, they do have similar approaches. They're both shot digitally. Obviously, 1917 is famous for its long take achievement. Uh, it was not technically one long take, but they shot it and edited it beautifully and seamlessly to make it appear as though it was it is one long take. And I love the approach. I think it's really impactful, very powerful because it has the real time aspect. Real time in terms of this movie, uh, it just feels like it's happening in a two hour period. And I've rarely experienced a film like that. There's only a handful that really actually pull that off. If you take a movie like Birdman, it has the same approach in cinematography and editing, but that takes place over the course of a day and a half. So it doesn't have the real time aspect that this film does. And to see not just like, and there are other long take movies, Silent House with Elizabeth Olsen, uh, Veronica, which is a great French film. They're all one takes, but they're very small in scope, few characters. But to see a movie of this scale, a giant World War I film being shot with that style, I thought it was very mesmerizing. And the only reason why it didn't win Best Picture and the only the only reason why Sam Mendes didn't win Best Director was because Parasite came out that year. Mm -hmm. And that's an all-time movie. This is an all-time war movie and one of the best of the last decade. But Parasite, it really is an all-timer. Like for, a top 100 movie yeah, of all time. for film history. And that, and if 1917 had come out any other year, I feel confident that Sam Mendes and the film would have won. He actually won the Golden Globe and the DGA Award. So it was he was a shoe in for Best Director, but Bong Joon-ho came out on top. And All Quiet on the Western Front, it actually approaches it in a very similar way with the cinematography, but also I like how what All Quiet on the Western Front, it showcases the German side, which the story does. And it's I, I think it's amazing to be able to tell the story of the, the enemy side of uh, culture that we fought against. I think it's absolutely appropriate, and it's important to tell stories of everyone involved in, in conflict. But what this does is, especially with the youth we see, Paul and the other characters, they are completely... Um, sold on war. They're excited. They're tr Paul um, changes his birth date to get into so that he can get drafted and, and enter the war. The kids are excited and elated. The German youth want to kill the French. They want to kill the British. They want to be proud Germans. They want to fulfill the destiny of their culture and their people. And so they were sold on this by the government and by the basically the marketing campaigns of the warfare. And then when they get to war, Within the first day, they see how horrible of a place it is. Yeah, that was great, the, the technical specs that you were talking about, because I believe 1917 was the first film ever shot with the Ari Alexa Mini, Mini. LF, LF. And then this film, All Quiet on the Western Front, was also shot with that. So that's why not only does it look similar with the cinematography, Obviously, 1917 is superior cinematography. You have Roger Deakins, the GOAT, one of the greatest cinematographers. I would call him the greatest time. of all time. One of the best yeah. artists of all time behind a camera. He filmed 1917. That's why, you know, it looks incredible. It might be one of the best looking movies this century. You could argue that for sure. And then All Quiet on the Western Front, really good cinematography. Not quite the same when it comes to lighting and artistry, but they did a, a, there are still plenty of tremendous shots in this film. Yeah. There are a few shots in All Quiet on the Western Front that I thought were kind of weak compared to the rest of the film, but I would say 99.5% of that movie looked beautiful, looked gorgeous, whereas 1917, that entire film was so well planned and art, artistically crafted. And in addition to that, they look very similar, lots of same characters, but they do different things really well. You know, some things that I think All Quiet on the Western Front does really well with this film, the new interpretation from 2022, is it it shows death. 1917 does this as well, but really, I think All Quiet on the Western Front, they really wanted to showcase the death, the death toll, the, the toll that it took on every country that was involved and how tragic and almost futile it seems that all these young men had to die in battle and all these casualties from civilians had to occur. You know, opening the film, 
with the process of what happens to the dead soldiers, how they're basically just treated like trash in a lot of ways, and the recycling of their clothing, the remanufacturing of their bullet holes and their jackets to be repurposed and given to a new recruit that's going into the Western Front. I think they did a terrific job showing what happens to the bodies and how horrific it is and how basically they mean nothing to the people who run the countries, which is tragic. And the stubbornness of the people who are in charge, because Daniel Bruhl's character, Birdzinger, I'm sorry, what's his name in it? Ed, Ed Erzberger, uh, he ends up negotiating the peace treaty in the Armistice. He's informed that another 40,000 German soldiers had died that month. And this is 18 months after we saw Paul's first day in warfare. And many Germans died that day. That was Heinrich. Yeah, uh, Heinrich, I'm sorry. They It was a losing battle at this point for Germany. Like, they had no chance of really winning this war but they kept fighting and the leadership kept pushing and kept going. And even even at the end of the film in the third act, when the armistice is going into effect in a few Armistice. 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 Yeah. Armistice? Yeah. Sorry. When that's going into effect in only a few more hours, that commander still says, we're going to try to take this land. We're not going to go out without a fight. The, the peace treaty was signed. They're, they didn't have to fight, but they just kept going. And obviously the French, they were in in their barracks and they were in um the trenches trenches but they weren't and they weren't expecting an attack and then the germans came up and kind of surprised them by charging at them the french never expected that they would try to attack with only a few hours left of actual technical warfare a few minutes yeah. there's 15 minutes left yeah that's why i think when i watched the movie i feel like that's a very fascinating story to tell is that final, like, two hours? Well, I, th I think what they're trying to do with All Quiet on the Western Front compared to 1917, which 1917, you know, it's that long take. It's a great singular story of just, like, pretty much this one character's journey to try to warn a troop that they're heading into a trap and following the British soldiers and obviously just the one that survives to that point. Pretty fast-paced story, you know, not a ton happens in terms of large-scale storytelling for the war, whereas All Quiet on the Western Front, it seems like it's a very long film. It's about two and a half hours long, lots of different climactic beats. We have like three or four different battles. Lots of scenes, But yeah. I think what they're trying to do is to show how drawn out the war was, how much pointless death there was, how so many people people just died for no reason how no side would concede and how it just kept going on and on and on i think that's what they were trying to do with this film with this character paul who is just wants to get out of there but he's become a soldier and a recruit and this war just keeps going on and on there's a battle then they think they're free from the battles then another battle and then he thinks he survived the war and then there's another battle it just won't stop ending i think that the filmmakers are trying to draw it out to make it feel like what the war was really like for the for real people how it just never would end